In this video, I'm going to be showing you how you can set up and deploy your own custom proxy server in Node.js in only about 50 lines of code. We're going to run through this relatively quickly. Then once that's all set up, I'm going to be showing you how you can deploy it on a service called Render. Now, Render is a really great service that offers a free tier. If you're just looking to tinker and demo or just try out their service, they have a generous free tier that you can go ahead and deploy Node.js apps on. And once it's all set up, we're going to be integrating this within custom GPTs. And the reason I wanted to do a little bit more content around custom GPTs is I just saw today that the GPT store will be launching next week. If you're not familiar, the GPT store, this was announced during the OpenAI Dev Day, and this will be a way that a lot of AI builders and LLM developers will be able to monetize what they build and become useful on the GPT store platform. I'm going to be showing you how and why a proxy server could be useful in the context of a custom GPT. I'm going to be pulling over my screen for what I've set up already here, and I'm going to go through all the steps to get up to this point if you're curious on how to set this up. On the left-hand side here, I have my own custom GPT, this website proxy GPT that I've set up. And then on the right side here, I have a GPT-4. So if I put in the question of what is on Hacker News right now, and I'll explain in a little bit on how this actually works for the website proxy and how it actually goes and parses and gets the information. If I go ahead and query both of these at the same time, now what GPT-4 is doing, it says it's going to Bing, it's searching Bing, it's looking for the information. It might parse a website, it might parse multiple. By the time you get a response back, it can sometimes feel like it takes a little bit of time. And oftentimes you might feel like you don't have the control to steer it in the direction that you potentially want to. So if you see here, we have the same information essentially across both the website proxy and GPT-4, but you might have noticed that on the website proxy, the response started to come in a fair bit sooner before GPT-4. And the other thing with this is by having control of the proxy server is you don't necessarily need to just return the HTML or inner text of the website. If you want to integrate something with LangChain within this, you could definitely do that type of thing as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually show you all the Node.js code, and we're going to run through this relatively quickly. But the first thing that you're going to have to do is just set up a new directory and go ahead and npm in dash y. Then what we're going to do is we're going to install install a few dependencies. So we're going to npm install Axio, Cheerio, and Express. And I'll get into those in just a moment. So once you have all those dependencies installed, you can go ahead and touch an index.js as well as a dot get ignore. And you can also pull this down just from the repo in the description of the video, which I'll be posting shortly after the video has gone live. If you go within the git ignore, just to get this out of the way, you can put in your node modules just so you're not pushing that to GitHub. And then once that's all set up, we can go and get started within our index chats. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import those modules that we just installed. So we're going to be importing Axios, Cheerio, and Express. So Axios is what we use to make requests. So this is what we're going to actually use to get the data from websites. And Cheerio is going to be what we use to parse the DOM elements. So Cheerio has a jQuery-like syntax. So if you've ever used jQuery, it's very straightforward. You can go ahead and parse the HTML really easily with that dollar sign selector. And then Express is going to be how we set up our Node.js server. Next, we're going to just initialize our Express app. Then we're going to be defining some middleware. The reason why we're going to be setting up some middleware is to allow that OpenAI custom GPT to essentially access it. So you can refine this if you want. Say if you want to lock down your post requests or your patch or delete or whatever, you can remove some of these things. But this is just an example of how to get started. So once we have that, we're just going to apply our core's middleware. Then from there, we're going to be setting up a really simple scraping logic here. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be sending in a query parameter for a URL. It's going to be, I'm going to just show you here. It's going to look something like this. So it's going to be our server, and then we're going to have the route of scrape, and then it's going to be the URL. Now, what's happening with that custom GPT, like I'd shown you, it's essentially asking the model to give us a URL. So when I said, show me the results for Hacker News, I'm asking it with the schema that I define to 
give me a HTTPS uh, URL, essentially, which we'll get into a little bit further. But that's just a bit of an aside. So next, we're going to simply do a get request for the information on the website. So one caveat with this is since we're just doing a simple get request for the raw HTML, if you have something like a single page application, it might struggle with something like that. But I do plan on making some content with Puppeteer on potential other ways that you can get around this type of issue if you run into this on potential websites. So then we're just going to be doing a simple parsing of the HTML. So this is our Cheerio. So I just threw in a few things here just to clean up the data. So you really likely don't want script tags, style tags, images, and even the nav and footer you don't really necessarily need, especially in this use case. Then the other thing with custom GPT is you have a limited context window. So I just put in a crude stop here. I didn't test this to see how high I could potentially go, but you could play around with this a little bit further. And then also with the response or right before the response, you can set up some logic to parse it further, set something up with Langchain potentially, or reach out to other services that you might have. You can do all sorts of things with this setup. So hopefully this works as a setup for not just a proxy server necessarily. If you're Node.js developer, you should be able to take what I'm showing you and be able to tweak it and set up whatever you want, really. So once that's set up, you can set up a Git repository. The service that we're going to be using is Render. Now, Render is really great because all you need to do to set up a Node.js server is you just link up your GitHub repository. You can sign up for a free account on Render. Once you've set up your GitHub repository, you can just connect it here. All you need to do to set it up is create a unique name. You can keep the region the same. You can select a main as your branch. Now, for the actual build command, I'm going to be using npm. So you can just npm install all of the different dependencies. And then for the command, if you put within your package JSON, you could have something like npm run dev, or you could have something just like node index.js. Then you can just go ahead, select their free tier. Once that's done, you can just go ahead and create web service and it's going to go ahead. Let's just do a test here. And it's going to go ahead and just start building and deploying that server for you. Once it's set up, you can access your server from the link here, and then you're essentially off to the races. I'm just going to leave this sort of running in the background here. Again, you'll be able to reach all this code in the GitHub repository. I think it's actually already public and live. So if you want to reach for it, you can go ahead and pull it down. Now, in terms of the portion to actually set up the custom GPT, it is relatively straightforward to do this. So what we're going to be doing is if I go into edit GPT here, now, to actually create the GPT, if you haven't used the GPT builder before, you can actually use this natural language to build it. So you can specify some things about what you like to build. I find it's actually really helpful to do the initial prompt here to get some of this configuration out of the way. It will give you some conversation starters and instructions and that sort of stuff. It might even give you a little Dolly logo like you see here. And what you can do, so I have a couple examples here. I can say, what is the Wikipedia on worms about? The other thing with this is you don't necessarily need to just hit like a root domain, right? So if I say, what is the Wikipedia on worms about? It's going to get that URL path from the GPT knowledge base, which it has, and then it's going to get the response from the proxy server and then start to give me information from that live Wikipedia page. So to set up the action, what you'll have to do is you'll have to create a new action. So I'm going to be going in and just clicking edit here. And all that we're going to have to do is essentially set up this JSON schema. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be mapping with natural language what our GPT action does, as well as things like the parameter that we're using. So we're using the URL parameter and then the description of what that parameter is. The syntax is a little bit ugly and it does take a little bit of time to get used to, but the more you play around with it, the more intuitive it becomes. Then once you've done that, you can go ahead and save that. And that's pretty much it. You have your own custom proxy server. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. If you did, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And otherwise, until the next one.